Let's go once again with another most amazing top 10 video on most amazing top 10. My name is Danny Berg, and today we're going to be getting all sciencey up in your face with our top 10 facts about science. Now, just to be clear, we aren't talking about scientific facts such as there are more atoms in a teaspoon of water than there are teaspoons of water in the Atlantic Ocean, but there's a free little bonus one for you. We're going to be talking facts about the study of science itself. So let's get out of the intro and get stuck into this with our number 10. The English word science science actually comes from the Latin word scientia, which means knowledge. So the actual word itself refers to humans collecting information and trying to understand the very reality we live in. If you've ever looked at anything in the physical world and wondered how exactly does that work, then the knowledge behind that is a part of science. At number 9, the scientific revolution was the transformation of science as we know it that started in the mid 16th century and lasted up to the 18th century. It was essentially a time when science began to move away from people taking everything that was said in the past as true just because someone had said it was. Before this, ancient teachings from the Romans and Greeks and religious doctrine were seen as the unquestionable truth. One example being the long held belief that the earth, not the sun, was at the centre of the solar system. But with the scientific revolution it moved towards a more modern science that wasn't afraid of challenging and questioning the world around us no matter what anyone said. Things were only accepted as true if they could be observed, tested and proved by anyone who wanted to do so. On to number 8 now guys and we're going to be talking about how some of the greatest scientific discoveries ever were made totally by accident. Examples of this include when Alexander Fleming let mould get into some dishes of bacteria he was experimenting on and found that one of them stopped bacteria growing altogether. He developed this into the bacteria busting penicillin that has saved countless lives. And that's just one example of many so who knows maybe one day one of you guys out there watching this video is going to make an amazing science scientific discovery by accident, so just pretend that you're like, oh yeah, I meant that all along. Yeah, I, that was intentional. Coming in number 7 now, we're going to talk about the different categories of science. The universe is huge, and so science needs to be huge to explain it, and it helps if you break that down into different categories. The physical sciences include physics, chemistry and astronomy. The earth sciences include geology, oceanography, paleontology and meteorology, and then there's the life sciences, also known as biology, that include botany zoology, genetics and medicine. And there are tons of other smaller ologies that can fit into those categories. For example, there's Scintology, which is actually the study of dogs. So if you're a dog lover, you could be the next great Scintologist. What are you waiting for? Next up at number 6, we're going to be talking about scientific theory. Now when a lot of people hear the term scientific theory, they think it means that scientists are just guessing. But that's simply not true. A scientific fact is something that can be observed and measured, but a scientific theory tries to explain why these facts of the universe are the way that they are. A good example of this is the theory of evolution or the theory of gravity. They both try to explain observable facts that scientists have found. Also, a scientific theory is always open to new evidence that might change it and bring it closer to how things actually are. Because at the end of the day, science is a human activity and humans are, after all, only human. But we try our best. Halfway through now guys at number 5 and let's talk about the Nobel Prize. Prize. In the modern age, the Nobel Prize is often awarded to scientists who make landmark advancements in the scientific study of chemistry, physics and medicine. Scientists tend to become scientists in the name of science and the pursuit of knowledge and all that good stuff, but if they did want a prize for it, then the Nobel Prize is kind of like the gold medal of science. One of the most famous scientists of the modern era, Albert Einstein, he was a Nobel Prize winner and also possibly the most famous female scientist of all time, Marie Curie. And this brings us nicely onto our number 4 because we're going to talk about women in science. Because despite not receiving the same opportunities and education as men in science until fairly recent times, female scientists have made amazing scientific breakthroughs throughout history. Marie Curie, who I just mentioned before, was the first person to ever win two separate Nobel Prizes prizes for her discovery of radioactivity. Barbara McClintock was the first person to propose the theory of jumping genes within genetics when nobody thought it was possible. And then there was my favourite, Rosalind Franklin, who was the woman that x-rayed DNA in the 1950s to try and figure out its structure before anyone knew what it actually looked like. But unfortunately her x-rays were taken and used by other scientists and she never really got any credit for it. So here's a tiny bit of recognition in this video. At number 3 now, let's talk about research ethics. Research ethics involves what is considered right or wrong conduct within science. Scientific research that involves human or animal experimentation is a good example of where ethics science
science comes into play. Basically, science always wants to make breakthroughs because, as I said earlier in the video, it's all about the pursuit of knowledge. But sometimes research ethics needs to step in and say, okay, what you're doing is cool, but is it right? A good example of this is embryonic stem cell research. Now, some people think that a human embryo is already a life in itself and that it shouldn't be experimented on or destroyed. But other people think that it's just a bunch of cells and they're not actually alive. What do you guys think? This is research ethics. At number two now, the most scientific country in the world is the United States of America. A 2013 study found that the US is number one for scientific journal authors, scientific patents, and spending money in science. It found that the US spent $424 billion in research and development in 2013, and that was almost twice as much as the number two, China. So if anyone's going to discover time travel first, my money is on America. So we've talked a lot about the past and present in science, but at number one, where is science going? What are the big unanswered questions? There are still many questions about extra dimensions in space and time, how quantum mechanics really works, and the study of the incredibly small, it's still in its infancy. And science is still looking for the answer to the question, is there intelligent life out there? We might look back at science hundreds of years ago and think their knowledge was pretty primitive and a lot of it was incorrect, but the truth is there's still a lot we don't know ourselves. Some people say that there's no way that humans could know everything and that to know everything is simply impossible. But others say if you give science enough time, it will unlock the answers to every question you could possibly think of. What do you guys think? Get chatting about it down below, guys, and also let me know which one of these was your favorite, and also keep the suggestions coming for future videos, because that's all we got time for in this episode of Most Amazing Top 10. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with all the great content we have on this channel. There's also two videos floating over there, so give them a click if you want to keep watching and just carry on rolling on and on and on. In the meantime, I do hope you guys have a most amazing day. My name is Danny Burke, and if you do want to follow me on Instagram, it's somewhere down there, and I'll see you guys soon.